What happens if you distill over oaked whiskey? Can you fix it? I have no idea. We're gonna find out. I just said, yes, man, I mean, All right, so I have what I like to call my big box of mistakes. Right there. And that is my huge collection of stuff that I forgot about. And they've been sitting with the wood in the bottles or in the jars for a long time. This one, some of my Apple Thumper brandy, and it's been sitting for almost two full years. My wife is making fun of me. We're using air quotes. I never did perfect Amberana wood aging. I still have to work on that. My theory is that Amberana aging only takes about two weeks. If you're unfamiliar with Amberana wood, I got it from uh, my buddy Ken over at Barrel Charwood Products. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to him down in the video description because basically all the wood that I've used to age my products are from him. And Amberana wood is weird. When it's raw and fresh, it smells like cookies, like snickerdoodle cookies or graham crackers. It's just got a cinnamon and biscuity sugary kind of smell to it and it's from brazil it's really interesting stuff but the problem is when you age it in spirits it does not take much time to impart that flavor and if you go past the window of good it doesn't go like oh that's too much it goes medicinal like camphor it smells like old-timey medicine yeah cinnamon and camphor not a super great combination in my uh, red white bourbon so i've got this huge box of stuff what i'm going to do is basically stick to oak um, or stuff that will complement oak because i don't know if the flavor is going to carry over and if it does how strong i'm just going to be putting this in the little mini still that we made for the uh, for the liquor fairy to try out i'm not trying to make vodka i'm just trying to see if i can strip out some of the really objectionable flavors of over oaking because I know everybody in this hobby has done it at least once and you you know you spent all that time fermenting and then distilling so you know the last thing you want to do is just pitch it just throw it out um, so I haven't really found a whole lot of information online nothing really definitive for me so um, I got to test it out myself all right so red white and blue bourbon with Amberana wood Apple brandy with uh, mulberry and maple. It's not bad, but it's a little over the line for something you'd want to enjoy. Apple brandy with French oak and cherry. That gorgeous beauty is pochine with European chestnut, but it's way too tannic. Ugh. Oh, that's a shame. Because that pochine came out so good. Apple brandy with white oak and birch. Pochine with charred American white oak. Damn it. All faints with charred white oak. Now if you're doing a really big vessel like a gallon, chunks of wood this size are not that big a deal because um, they're gonna go slow and, and mature slowly. But you know, I'm doing everything in mason jars and it's just, it's too, it's too much wood for too long. You know, at the most, I'd say six months. And you really need to start tasting it at three months and find out, you know, where it's at. All right, cold plates of cherry. Yeah, it smells amazing, but I already know. I tasted this one yesterday and it's just so bitter. I think it's more all faints. And this is all faints with charred apple wood. So yeah, I basically just hollowed out my liquor cabinet. I have my red, white, and blue bourbon, and I've got an apple whiskey, and not much else, uh, other than some of the international spirits that I didn't age, like Baiju and Plum Rakia and stuff like that. The Shochu I haven't aged. I'm gonna have to start making some more whiskey, because I like it. I might have to do this twice, because still have all this candy corn and I'm at about three quarters of the way up. Plus, none of this is below 40%. So, 
<laughs> I'm gonna be making jet fuel. This is the candy corn whiskey. All right, I think I've got just enough room to add some water and then uh, we're gonna send this to the liquor ferry. Hypothetically. And uh, get this run to see what happens. You can do it in one of two ways. You can either treat it like a stripping run and run it hot or you can run it low and slow and try to keep some of those grain flavors. But if you try to keep some of those grain flavors, you might also be keeping a little too much of the wood. I don't know, I've never done it. Maybe I will split this in half and try it twice. Let's do that. So let's split this in half and we'll tell the liquor fairy to do one run fast and one run slow and see whether or not either one of them is actually helpful at stripping out some of these uh, wood flavors. So, wish me luck. All right, so I got my jars back from the liquor ferry after both runs, and to me, everything was exactly the same. There was no real difference between running it fast and running it slow. Now, if you have a reflux still, and you can reflux this stuff for, you know, like 45 minutes or something before you start pulling off, you might get a different result. But the long and short of it is, I could still smell the wood. It's in there. There's not really any getting rid of it with the pot still. And that's from the heads all the way down into the tails. Now the interesting thing is in the heads, the fruit woods show up. Now granted, this was a crazy mix of apple brandy and a couple of different kinds of whiskey. So the flavors are kind of all over the place for the base spirits, but you can still pick out those kind of bright notes from the fruit woods like apple and cherry wood and then down here in the tails you can really tell it's amberana wood that kind of medicinal cinnamon flavor is still there that camphor smell it's still in there so there really wasn't any cleaning that up right in the middle you've got your oak if i didn't know what it was i wouldn't know what it is that's that's the interesting thing because basically now you have a white spirit That's about 70% ABV right there. Uh, you have a white spirit with some serious oak character to it. It's very weird. So I didn't expect that to carry over. I really didn't. Um, now some of the grungier notes like the kind of tobacco flavors, they're not nearly as strong in there. The tannin is not nearly as strong. But from start to finish, every jar of the spirit has a bitterness and a stringentness to it. So can you clean up an over oaked spirit? Not with a pot still, no. Now maybe if you ran it a whole bunch of times and then um, filtered it, you could, you could get something that was a little more palatable, but then what do you do with it? Do you oak it again? You gotta be really careful with that because your timing is gonna be way off. Uh, since you've already got a lot of the oak flavor in there, a lot of the, the wood character and the tannin, you might not even get enough color from the wood in the time it takes for it to, you know, go way past where you want it to on the flavor. Your other option is, you know, to use it as feints, to throw it into a whiskey mash that you're going to go and, uh, and distill. So if you have like five gallons of whiskey mash and you want to throw in this uh, to add to your boiler to enrich it and get a higher alcohol yield, you can, but again, some of those harsh wood flavors are going to make it through the still. And when they do, that's just gonna complicate your aging process again. So you really have to think about whether or not it's even worth it, or if it's easier to just start over and make a new whiskey. I don't know that I'm even gonna bother to keep this, uh, other than, you know, for like sanitizer, really, really strong smelling sanitizer. You been drinking? No, but my hands are perfectly clean. <laughs> I always carried this hope in the back of my mind that, uh, you know, I could just take all these, you know, ruined projects, and you saw how many I had, and, and just clean them up and, and re-age them or, or something, turn them into something better. But, um, yeah, I think I, if I were less picky, 
I would just go ahead and, you know, drink them. But I, I, I'm picky now because I know what I can make. Hypothetically. My recommendation, instead of bothering to, you know, send it to the liquor fairy and, and getting a mediocre result, do what a lot of guys on the forums have recommended and use your over-oaked spirits as a seasoning, basically to blend in to something else to, to cut down that wood and stretch that flavor out so that one, you're not wasting it, and two, you know, if you have some interesting characters in there, basically use this as a tincture to add to either a white spirit or a lightly aged spirit that you want to bring something else to. Like if this had a crazy tobacco note that you love, but there's just too much of it, you can season some of that in to a finished whiskey, um, just a little bit, you know, an ounce or two, and it's really gonna add a lot of depth of character. So that's my recommendation is, you know, skip the rerun and uh, just use the over oak spirits that you have as tinctures. So there we go. I am really glad that I tested this out because I think I had a lot of false assumptions in my head and now I know I really need to pay attention to what I'm doing and, and not forget about all the stuff I have sitting out in the garage and uh, letting it just get ruined. So let this be a lesson to every single one of you. Don't over oak your stuff. Taste it often. All right, so I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my Patreons, all of these folks right down here for supporting my channel and sticking with me and uh, helping me come up with new ideas and to, you know, filter out some of the dumb crap that I have in my head. So thank all you guys so much. You are definitely keeping my lights on. I'm not exaggerating about that at all. So do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. If you want to see what I'm going to do next time, then uh, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, and hit the subscribe button right down at the bottom and then the little bell icon right next to it so that you get notified when I post new content. If you have any questions or comments, put your own personal experiences of over-oaking, any solutions you came up with, down in the uh, comment section down below. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for watching. Talk at you later.